Hi everybody and welcome. Uh, it's July the 27th uh, of 2020. So we are nearing the end of the seventh month. So um, I thought I would do an update with you guys. Uh, hopefully it will be a quick one for myself because um, I am going to make homemade spring rolls today so that takes quite a lot of time it's not that difficult it just takes a lot of time so I don't have like an infinite amount of time today <laughs> a lot of it is already uh, spoken for but I do have some whips for you. I have a little bit of haul and uh, of course plans and um, life update. So uh, since the last time I spoke to you I have a new start. Uh, it's the Pretty Little Produce Cell by a Fussy a fussy fox design on Etsy. Um, it was a sherry sal, um, and I needed that for. I needed a strawberry from a from a prompt plus something that is a pattern that some of the uh, money went to charity. So I need to do a little bit more on this one. But that's how far I got. That's, you know, it's not the most amount of stitches. Usually I do get a whole lot more when I do start something. Uh, but I need to get at least 500 more stitches in on this one. And so far I have done what what you saw was 207 stitches so 500 more to come hopefully i can get that done before july ends uh, next up uh princess serenity 2 by tilt and crap the design is by cordek uh, she's going to look like this and This is where I'm at now. So I am thinking of trying to do the method where you sew like a little hole, like you fold the fabric and you sew it so you get like a little hole-ish thing. So you can put your dowel in when using the Omnic frames. So I hope that maybe I can make that work and get it on a frame because then it will go so much faster than stitching in hand and yes I do like stitching in hand but not all the time especially if I'm having some bad days which I have had lately so getting that on a frame will be good so uh, and then we have a year down under which is um, pattern by paddock lane designs you can find her on Etsy and Facebook and this is how far I am now so I finished off the June block with the kangaroo um, just be aware that if you buy this, these patterns and want to do it on one big piece, some of the patterns aren't the exact same size. They are approximately the same size. Um, so on this one, uh, because of the Mayblock is a little bit taller, 
Uh, and this one is supposed to be a little... Um, not so wide. Uh, I had to make the tail myself on the kangaroo. But that's like, it's, it's not a hard thing to do. Like, uh, just because I had these borders, that basically what's messing it up when I start in the wrong place. Because what I should have done is start so the edge of the kangaroo's tail, where it was supposed to end, was at this edge. Because there's no problem getting it further this way and there's no problem that it's a tiny bit longer. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't notice that at all. So... Here's where I am on that one. Um, and then we have Once Upon a Fairy Tale by Amy Stewart. I do think I worked on this since the last time. I'm not sure because my biggest problem is I never remember when I last filmed. So, but this is how far I am now. You can just starting to see the castle showing. So, I have had a lot of requests uh, regarding my full coverage pieces. That if I want to do like a stitch with beam where, where I show how I park and how I do it. Because I don't do it the way a lot of other people are. Uh, I kind of have my own thing going on um, and I am working on getting that um, the biggest problem is actually not time even though a lot of my time is involving either my neighbor doing some work on the house or my husband doing some work on one of the rooms upstairs um, so I kind of struggle with getting the time to film because there's always noise around me and um, as you will see on the stitch with me that's that is coming out on Friday um, it's a big issue like I just had to stop recording uh, pretty early I, I struggle with that um, film getting it edited and stuff like that because there was so much background noise I had to mute it all out basically and um, it's also draining on myself with all the noise like it's um, my body don't handle noise very well like I can watch TV and stuff like that if I'm watching the TV if I am looking at it uh, like that usually goes okay but if it's like my husband having something on his phone like watching TV on his phone and just walking around the house like making basically making noise uh, or sounds from people lawing the maw um, uh, mowing the lawn uh, building stuff outside, using the electric saw, like stuff like that is really uh, a big problem. Uh, and there is a lot of that right now because um, Norway was uh, locked down a long time for travel traveling outside of the country. So a lot of people have done um just been doing on uh, either a holiday here in Norway like travel to other places or people have decided to use this opportunity to fix their house like because when you don't take uh, travel outside of the country you kind of save a lot of money because that's really expensive and um so they are using that money towards uh, either building on the house, maintaining the house, like stuff like that. So since we live in a pr pretty uh, residential area, there is a lot of houses around us. Uh, 
there is a lot of noise because everybody is home. <laughs> like that's, I never knew that was such a big problem living here in this place before this year. Because like uh, the place we live is a pretty, um, the people have a really high income usually. Like it's it's a place for people that are rich basically, even though we are, we're not rich at all. Uh, we were just very, very lucky when buying the house. We got a super good price. Um, so the area I live in, even though there is a lot of people around, like in daytime, everybody's at work. Like, and in the evenings, my husband and son is home, so it, it's kind of like, it's noisy already, so noise outside isn't, doesn't make that big of a difference, if that makes sense. Uh, and um, usually in the summertime, everybody is, is away, like out traveling or working like this is the first time so many people is home <laughs> in Norway <laughs> um, so yeah I never knew that was, was going to be an issue but it certainly is uh, an issue for me because that means a lot more people are living and when people are living they're making noise and like of course, they are allowed to be living. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying my body doesn't handle that well. So I am a lot more sick. So, and lastly, I have a page finish. You might know what project it is. And I took it off the frame because I'm going to move it. And that's also why I wanted to film today. So you could see all of this in its glory. So I'm gonna try and scoop back and see if we can get all of this goodness in the frame. So this is Epic Pokemon Generation 1. It's a free cross stitch by Sprite Stitch. And this is what it looks right now. I think I'm getting everything in the frame. I took a small peek. Like before it was easy because I could like look through the fabric, but now it's so dense on the back <laughs> because of the full coverage, uh, I can see through the back. So speaking of the back, you want to see? So this is what, how my back is looking. It usually tends out looking okay. My ha husband actually commented because he saw the back and he's like, it almost looked exactly the same on the back. And I'm like, well, thank you. I will take that as a compliment. So what I was working on was page 28, this page with uh, Charizard and Squirtle. So as you can see, they are both finished. I think the page break is somewhere around here. Like, so I have a little bit more into the next page. On Pattern Keeper, it's 78.8%, 78.88% done. Um, but with the fact that I'm doing the border, which is extra, uh, the black border, um, I'm calculating that I'm I'm having to do 22% left. So I'm over three quarters of the way done, which is nice. And now I'm going back up to the top, working these two pages simultaneously all the way down. Like there are six more pages left to do. So first I will do 
this and this one, and then this and this one, and so on. So yeah, uh, now I really feel like I'm in the home stretch, like getting to the part where this is the last time I'm moving up again to go down. Like now I'm, I'm just working down and this time when I reach the bottom, I'm done. <laughs> um, so that's going to be really nice. Uh, I made some calculations. And if I can do 250 stitches each day on my Epic Pokemon, I will be done by the 20th of November. My son's birthday is a little bit later in November. Uh, and I hope to make it into a birthday present for him. So I really hope I can keep that up. But that also means uh, something has to give, like, Especially now, when I'm, I'm actually struggling to get like 500 stitches in, in a day. Um, that's really difficult. <laughs> because that means if one day I'm not stitching, basically the next day I'm using all of the stitches I can get into Epic Pokemon. So... But it gives me a reference point. Uh, we're starting to get soon into August and then things will... In the middle of August, like things will lighten up a little bit. I usually have like a week there where um, everything is back to normal, hopefully. Uh, my husband doesn't know about his work yet, which is also... Uh, psychological drain on me um so but hopefully he will get some work for when the school starts back up in the middle of august that means i will get the time i need to get back to myself <laughs> if that makes sense uh, there will be less stuff i need to do because having my husband and son home it really makes it so there is a lot more for me to do. When doing the stuff I need to do, there it takes a lot longer because there's always people there. And my husband likes being social uh, most of the time. Uh, so that means, like, even if I'm just going to go and wash some clothing, he would suddenly come and start talking to me about stuff. Which, which is nice, it is. It just, it takes more time. Um, and it also doesn't help that I have been starting to play a new game, which I really love. It's called Shop Titans. Um, and uh, I have made my own guild. Just because I couldn't get in in the start, I couldn't get into any guild that I liked, and then my uh, best friend joined, and she jumped into the guild. Um, so, if you want to try and play that game, like, feel free to join and let me know, and you can join my guild because I need more people in my guild. So yeah, that game you basically own a shop. Uh, you make items that you can sell in your shop for money. Uh, you have some heroes and champions you send out into dungeons to fight monsters to get your stuff back to either make uh, items or get items that you can sell in your shop. You kind of uh, build up your heroes like the stuff you make, like clothes and weapons and stuff like that, you use to build up your hero so they get stronger and can go back into the dungeon. And it's like this all very addictive um, thing, <laughs> basically. Uh, it's really fun. I am enjoying it a lot. So, And uh, lately I have been feeling uh, very under the weather. And then I'm not, 
I'm struggling to to stitch actually um, just because I'm most of the time I have been laying in my bed and that has made me struggle with depression which usually is what happened when I just spend most of my day in bed all day every day it doesn't help that me and my husband had a really big fight right before his birthday he turned 30 and uh, things wasn't fixed and then we suddenly had this party going on and I had to be happy and social and be around people do some peopling and that just really knocked me out especially when things on the psychological side wasn't fixed um, so but issues fixed we're back to normal the, the problem is my body needs time to follow <laughs> uh, so yeah there has been a lot of uh, just laying in bed windows shut uh, curtains drawn so it's nice and dark and um, since there is a lot of noise going on I have my um, noise reduction headphone noise cancelling headphones um, so I have been watching usually something that isn't very very talkative like I when I'm like this I can't watch Gilmore Gilmore Girls if you ever have watched that show you know what I'm talking about when I'm saying they talk a lot <laughs> um, so um, I have usually been watching a little bit more slow going series um, and uh, listening to some audiobooks just having some music on reading books so I'm back to reading book both physically and audiobooks and playing games and so yeah that takes away from a lot of stitchy time but it's all good if we get back to normal as I said if I can do 250 stitches each day on epic Pokemon that will be done before the end of November uh, which is my goal and then right now for me everything else that I can get done is extra that's my mentality like all the other stuff is like out the window so I'm gonna participate in a few challenges next month especially in semi sane they have choose your whip for August where you each week you put out like okay two or three whips that you want to work on and people will vote on what they want you to work on so basically what I am doing, I'm using, or my plan is, I'm going to use Epic Pokemon each time for one of those spots. And the second one is going to be a project that I kind of want to need to get more stitches into. Like uh, Winnie the Pooh 2, I need a thousand stitches to complete a park in the full coverage fanatic uh, challenge. Um... Uh, and then I kind of want to do more on a year down under. So maybe if Winnie the Pooh is chosen this time, then I'm gonna switch that out with something else the next time. But Epic Pokemon is always going to be on there. So, um, and that's, and they're having like a, uh, also an event called Needlework Sweep where you work on one project and you kind of say that, okay, this project I want to kid up. And you kind of imagine that you're going into an LNS and buying all the stuff. And what you're buying all the stuff with, this imaginary stuff, 
uh, is stitches. So like I have said Mirabilia Stargazer. So then for all the different beads I need, like I need to do this amount of stitches to get that bead pack and that bead pack and this floss and you know, all that great stuff. Uh, and I think you're limited to one project. Either that one is the one you're limited to one project or it is another one because I'm participating in one more and I can't remember what it is right now because my brain just shut down. So yeah, of course I'm in the daily 30 group. That's a close group. So you can really join. Uh, so we haven't gotten the new challenges for like August monthly challenges usually comes either the 31st of July or the 1st of August. So I don't know what the monthly is yet and I still have, I still have two more challenges I want to do in July and there's not many days left and I have 250 stitches I need to do on Pokemon each day so that means there's limited amount to do on other projects but hopefully I will get there if not it's not the end of the world like I have other things in my life that is important and that will come first So yeah, that's my goal right now, is basically 250 stitches on Epic Pokemon. And if I lose one day, I'm gonna do 500 stitches the next day. Because I'm usually, I usually never go two days without any stitching at all. Um, which is good. So yeah, and so far I'm a little bit ahead, but I need to be because in those calculations, I haven't taken into consideration the border, the black border I'm also doing. There is a lot of stitches there and yes, they go quickly, but they still need to be done. So I kind of need to be ahead of schedule and I want to be ahead of schedule or else I'm gonna start stressing out again. That's what happened the last time um, when I found out that if I do like 500 stitches for X amount of days, I will be done in X amount of days. And that just were too much. Like 500 stitches is too much of a goal each day to reach if I'm having bad days. Like that's a no-go. Uh, so 250 stitches is much more doable and, um, just gonna do that and if I suddenly find out that I'm not gonna do any challenges and I'm gonna start a bunch of stuff that I want to start then I'm gonna start a bunch of stuff if not I'm not and next year I just have less whips to rotate on but still I have a lot of whips so it's not that big of an issue it's going to be fine it's fine. So, that was plans, life updates, whips. So, the last thing is haul. So, if you're not interested in that, like, it was lovely having you here. And if you want to see what I got in the mail, then feel free to stick around for a little bit longer. So, uh, Bags Plus had a giveaway again. And I think this time it was like everybody that didn't order in, was it June or May? It was, it was some months ago. And I did order something from her. So I got a free, I think these are called Floss Buddies. Uh, which I love. She made me Alice. She knows I like Alice. Maybe because I already have bought like 
three, four different kinds of things from her and everything has had like Alice patterns on them. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, you open it up and you have a lot of room for your bobbins. There is like a little pocket here that you could use to have a pen in. There is this um, hook for whatever you would need to use that for. I'm not sure what she has intended you can use it for, but it's it's nice if you want to if you want to kind of hang it up somewhere, uh, you can. So um, when I have used it um, in my bag, you can see this is my usually but usual bag that I'm dragging around if I'm having whips with me. So what I will do, like this bag has like this round uh, clamp. It's supposed to hold an extra bag inside the bag, but I have taken it out so I can fit my projects. And what I will do is very often is um, hook it on. Uh, because then if suddenly my bag falls over, like this won't disappear. Like it, it will be locked there. And I'm kind of like anxiety in person number one. So I'm always scared that somebody suddenly are going to rob me. And of course, what they're going to take is my lovely project bags and cross stitching because people want to steal cross stitching. Yeah, I know it doesn't make sense, but my anxiety <laughs> is making me think those things when I go outside. So having that hook to just hook onto my bag makes it so nobody can go into my bag and just snatch this out because it's stuck, basically. So yeah. And often what I will do is just lay the project just right inside here uh, and it usually kind of just lay in there. It doesn't fall out. So I think it has to do with the vinyl, like it kind of sticks in there. So, so I love this. Thank you so much, uh, Karina from Bags Plus. That was a really nice gift to get. And then uh, I found a Norwegian Stitcher on virtual stitchers, which is always, always fun. I have not asked permission to say her name, so I'm not going to. But she sent me some uh, stitchy goodness. Uh, she was cleaning up her craft space, and I said that if she had like extra floss, from uh, kits and stuff that she was just going to throw out. Like I would appreciate if uh, I could get it instead or like buy it from her. She was so kind, she gave it to me for free. Because what I will do is match it up with my uh, master DMC set and I can use it for cross stitching to save a little bit of floss. So. She was so kind to send me this big bag of floss. Uh, there's even some skeins of DMC in here. So she kind of gave me even more than I asked for. And then on top of that, she gave me this big bag of uh, Ada fabric, which is lovely because she sent me 11 count Ada. And when I make my coasters, sometimes um, I use motifs that are really small. And then on 14 count Ada, they're still really small. But now I can make them uh, bigger by putting them on um, 11 count instead of 14 count Ada. So that was really nice. And then... On top of that, she gave me this kit, which is absolutely stunning. Like, that's beautiful. 
so yeah I'm going to try and start stitching that too and I think it's mostly just cross stitches which is nice so yeah thank you thank you so much you know who you are I really really appreciate it so and then um adopt a whip on facebook uh, somebody was doing like a giveaway so they sent me this pattern uh to the moon which i really really like uh she sent me all the floss that is needed for this project which was a surprise i didn't know she was going to do that so and so yeah i might do it in these colors or I might change the colors up. I'm not sure yet. There is even a chance I will do it twice because I'm crazy like that and you all know it. Then uh, I found a Norwegian cross stitch selling group. Uh, so somebody was selling some wool floss really cheap. Um, so I kind of said, me please, and got it for like next to nothing. And my thinking is that, um, there is some patterns I have seen where you use, uh, you make like 3D dolls, teddies. And you use the wool floss to kind of make hair and stuff like that. Also, my thinking is that if I'm stitching something with sheep or something like that on, I can use this wool floss to make it even more dimension to the cross stitching. And then the same place, uh, somebody was selling uh anchor floss so i jumped into that one and bought myself some anchor floss and one of the reasons i bought these bags of floss is that a lot of them had like very neutral colors in them for the most part so kind of like that those neutral colors will often be used so so yeah that was my haul um my new stand hasn't shipped yet but it can take six to eight weeks so there's still some weeks left i think when did I order it? In June? Sometime in June. So I think we're getting, I think maybe closer to the end of June. So that means like, I think I found that at the beginning of August, if I'm lucky is when it's going to ship. If not, it's going to end close, it ship closer to the end of August. So we'll just see when it comes it is coming like i have bought it so it just takes some time that's that's okay i have my lovely lowry stand for now um and so far um now i, I don't think i'm gonna put epic pokemon on a frame uh just because now I have made it so it is possible to work on it. Just those two last pages of the rows going down. So there's no big need for a frame other than handling the massive amount of fabric. Then I have some stitchy goodness coming from the US. Sammy from Sammy J Stitches was so kind that she offered to get me some floss that I needed. 
and when I say some, it's a pretty big bulk. So she did, she did an amazing job. Like, Sammy, you're amazing. Um, so that will be arriving. And also I have from the boutique in the daily 30, uh, you basically earn tokens and you can spend those tokens getting stuff from the boutique in the daily 30 group. You cannot join the daily 30 group. It is a closed group. Um, so yeah, you kind of earn tokens to spend in the boutique. So you get stuff, uh, which Cheryl sends for free. Like she's amazing. Uh, she really is an amazing woman. And um, it has let me get something that I have really been wishing to get for a long time and now I did so fingers crossed that will arrive safe and sound <laughs> um, so yeah it's um there's going to be some stitchy goodness in the future coming along uh, and we'll just see what August brings. Hopefully things will get a little bit more back to normal. Uh, I am on health wise, I am on the mend. So hopefully it will keep going that way. So now I'm gonna leave, say goodbye and then take a nap and go make some spring rolls. So have a lovely day and I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.